Hey, 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 music therapy last year. What's happening? Yes, I got one of those. <laughs> got a little bit of my buddy Tim playing uh, Texas Jackdaw, known as Texas Jackdaw here on YouTube in the background. Some of his original music with his band, and we are ready to go live. I hope you guys can hear me all right. How do you guys like my timer thing? I gotta, I gotta figure out a way to set music to that, some of my own original music. But in the meantime, I'm happy to share music by some of the uh, wonderful musicians out there in the YouTube community, like uh, Tim Roberts here in his uh, band. I think he's got a Tim Roberts band going on. Check out his music, man. So let me turn that down a little bit. Let's go ahead and maybe just turn it off, right? So go ahead and turn it off. Fantastic stuff, man. The guy can sing, the guy can play. It's got charisma. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I, I don't know who is in the chat. Let me see if there's uh, I know that. Uh, well, I know that Nelson Rodriguez already jumped in on the chat here today. And and uh, we've got uh, Nelson Rodriguez in the chat today. <laughs> me and him so far. I did not get a chance to put a, a you know, a page up or something like that showing that this is going to be going live uh, today, as usual, 930 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Music Therapy Labs here doing the Guitar Mods Squad show. That's right. And, uh, you know, I had a request. I think it was uh, Fico, Fico of uh, the Croatian country, Croatian rocker, rock on Croatia. Hungarians and Croatians get along very well. We uh, combined our, our – oh, I, I accidentally had that volume up. We combined our empires at some point, I think. <laughs> Not like I was around then. <laughs> what do I – I have no involvement in that. Um, I was born here in the United States, but – but yeah, Fico, the Croatian rocker, asked me, Laz, what do you use to keep your guitars in such nice shape and clean order? Which is not entirely always true. <laughs> but I do like to keep things nice. Uh, you know, one of the bad things I do is I, I keep them hung on the wall because I like to see them. It's like art to me. So I like to see them and sometimes I'm in the mood to play that, that you know, the that, that penning one. Or I'm in the mood to play this uh, D'Angelico, or I want to play the seven string right here, or I want to play the super strat that I'm going to be, uh, or the super strats behind me. This this one's going to get super stratted, right? That one's in process. Right now it's got the Vega trim on there. See that tremolo? I'll pull that down and show you guys if you want. But um, yeah, uh, you know, I got the Schecter here all striped up, missing a stripe. I was going to put a purple stripe there in memory of uh, Eddie, but I'm going to eventually get you know the real thing or make one. I think making one is kind of like more in the spirit of Eddie Van Halen. But, um, yeah, I got a bunch of stuff out here on the table. And I don't have my multicam set up yet, you know. Uh, I did pay for StreamYard because I'm going to try to start. You see the, see the Laz up there? Where is he? There. That guy. <laughs> got rid of the duck. That's right. I'm going to go ahead and pay StreamYard uh, and, you know, try to get uh, some more things done. Well, I'm going to get rid of this thing. I don't need that. Live with StreamYard, Roxy. We've got a little Roxy right up here now, too. Um, and I'll do some cards, and I'll do some other things. i got to, you know, get some other things going on the channel here to make it more fun. Um, yeah, but we are live, and I hope some more people come into the chat. Uh, we've got six people is what it says on StreamYard here. So don't, don't be shy. Don't lurk. Jump in if you can. You know, put your non-lurking hat on and join the chat. Say hi to Nelson. Say hi to Roxy. She's out there in the world somewhere. I, I think she feels all this energy, right? <laughs> but, yeah, thanks for joining. We're going to go over a number of the uh, tools and stuff. And if you saw the picture, um, you know, I'm going to make this short, by the way. I'm going to do a half an hour show because I know we've got my buddy Mike, China Mike, Guitar Skeptic, has uh, something going on live with John Mayer. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I've been incognito or what would you call it? I've been beyond lurking. I've been not even taking part in the last uh, day and a half or two really on anything YouTube or the internet because I was whitewater river rafting up in the uh, the mountains here in California. Well, starts, you know, from the foot of the Sierras and heads down into Folsom Lake, which is just uh, north of the northeast of the capital of California, Sacramento, or we used to call it in, the, in our I think it was because of a radio show. Some guy, I think it was called Dr. Demento <laughs> on the radio. We call it Sacra Tomato. <laughs> Sorry about the shaking. I think the, I have my 
computer on a book to make it a little higher. And it seems like if I'm touching the table, I'm, I'm like, earthquake is shaking. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm wearing, uh, by the way, in honor of today's show, I'm wearing this uh, OG uh, shirt. I don't know if any of you recognize this shirt. Do any of you recognize this? Look at the top of the tone knob there. Know your gear. That's right. Actually, it's know your tone as well, right? <laughs> That's a tone knob, as you can tell. <laughs> and learn it, live it, love it. That comes from uh, the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It was uh, one of the, the, I guess, one of the lines that one of the main characters, uh, Judd Hirsch, uh, the actor, played um, when the kids were, I think it was Spicoli, you know. He comes into the uh, restaurant with no shirts and stuff, and 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 he says, hey, read the sign, and it says, no sh shirt, no shoes, no service. And he's like, oh, you know, there were all these, like, stoner heads. It was really a funny moment. Um, and then when, you know, they saw the uh, no shirts, no shoes, no service, he said, learn it, live it, love it. <laughs> and that became like a saying like we used to use in the 80s and stuff because that was like a our era 80s movie. So, um, yeah, so I'm wearing the uh, Know Your Gear shirt because this is one, I think this is the first one I got, maybe. I think I got one of the black ones first, you know. And this might have been a little bit later, but this is pretty early, uh, about four or five years ago shirt. And, um, yeah, I, I learned a lot from watching Phil McKnight's show. So I'll put him in the description, of course, when I'm done with this show uh, and list some of these items that I'm using. But um, there's a lot of stuff on the table down here. You guys want to see it? Let me show you real quick. I'm going to pull the camera off. I'm just going to give you guys a quick view of what we got going on here. All kinds of tools there, right? So I'll pick them all up one by one, show them to you, and explain why I use them and how I use them to keep my guitars in tippity-top shape. So where should I start? Um, you know, first place I think I should start is, again, a real quick quick roll call. If there's anyone else live in the chat, let me, let me refresh that. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of new people in here right on. Hey, hey. So let me start again from the top. We got Nelson Rodriguez. Thanks for joining, Nelson. We got Mitch Heyman. What's up, Mitch? <laughs> Fruitcake Tony. Tea Cake, what's up? Dude, I got your amp sitting here. I already messaged Brandon. Please tell me how much to make me one of them Bumblebee cigar box guitars. I'll PayPal you the money right away and just make it. Hopefully sooner than later, but, you know, I don't want to pressure the old dude. <laughs> <laughs> then we got somebody new, Radio Papizza. <laughs> Sorry, Radio Papizza. Beautiful background, he says or she. Uh, greetings from Italy. Right on, Italy. I've been through Italy. I've driven through northern Italy, driving to Barcelona from Budapest with my mom's cousin for a Formula One race way back in the God. That was in nineties. That was ninety-seven or eight or nine, ninety-eight maybe. Yeah. Fun time because that 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 was a great trip. We went to London as well. I took my cousin Joe. He was just graduating high school and a lot of pressure from the parents about you know college and this and that. He was freaking out and he needed a break. <laughs> so I'm like, dude, let's go to Europe for a month. So we went to Budapest. Uh, we went to London and during that trip, we also went to uh, Barcelona. Um, drove uh, uh, one of the, the my cousin had a sports car, a Citroen, and uh, it's a French via French made car. Uh, it was a sports car. It kind of looked kind of like, uh, I don't know how to really describe it. It was kind of like a Porsche-esque kind of thing, a little slanty-nosed kind of red car. And the Autobahn kind of, you know, they have them going through Austria too. And Switzerland, I think we had to go through Austria. I don't know if we went through Switzerland, but through Austria, and through the northern part of Italy into Spain, of course. Um, man, what a fun drive that was. I got to drive in the hills of Italy through all those tunnels and all that, you know, like you see in the movies and the race car dudes on like, you know, Fast and Furious or whatever. And and I was, I was you know, pushing it because <laughs> I love to drive. I'm, I'm a race car driver in, in, in spirit as well. <laughs> so my first car was an RT Charger that I bought with my own money when I was 16. A little help from my dad and my mom, but mostly it was money I'd saved up. Uh, and I bought that when I was 16 and a half, basically. I was uh, my... My first car was an RT, a 69 RT 440 Charger. Yeah, 
the six pack. <laughs> Bought it from a friend of my mom's who was getting divorced. The husband sold it to me for 5K. And I'm not going to tell that story because it's very sad what happened. But um, I wish I still had that car and someday I'll have another one like it. So back to uh, back to that. Uh, I went off the rails there. Rody's Jan Cave in the house. Of course, we got Nelson back again saying hi to everybody. Mike will be in on half an hour. Yeah, I'm going to definitely bail before then, dudes, because my wife and I have to go do something. I was gone all day yesterday and almost a Friday. Um, whitewater rafting, which was so, so fun. Such a blast. And we got, uh, who else we got here? We got the lamb. The lamb is in. The, the lamb. And then we got Paul Lou as well. So I don't think FICO's here. If he's not going to make it, this he can watch it on the rerun, as you guys know. Um, once again, I'm wearing the Know Your Gear Phil McKnight shirt. This is the tone one. Learn it, live it, love it. So this this stuff I'm going to show you guys here, I think most of you probably have some of or, you know, the basics, right? And so I'll start with the basics first because I think it's really important to to keep your guitars in good shape. I mean, yeah, some people just play them to pieces and they're on the road and they don't have a roadie kind of dude or guitar tech to keep things clean or whatnot. I mean, if you've ever seen Eddie Van Halen's guitars on tour, I mean, they look like they're, you know, pretty, 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 pretty wiped out. But, you know, the number one, the first thing that I ever got to do anything with as a guitarist when I was in my early 20s, late teens is some of this stuff. So yeah, 70%, you know, just isopropyl rubbing alcohol. What would you use this for, you might ask, right? Well, what you do is you get yourself one of these lint-free cloths, right? And you can get this at the music stores or whatever. This one's probably a Guitar Center one or what? Oh, it's a Jim Dunlop one, right? And you can see it's dirty because it's been used. And I use this one to clean the fretboard. Once they get really slimy like this, uh, pretty bad. You can wash them, of course. But what you can do with this, and let me turn the uh, the camera down onto the uh, the uh, what we're going to be doing here. I got my Gretsch up here because, you know, it's been sitting up on the wall for a while, and I'm sure the strings are, I can feel them. They're definitely not, you know, in great shape, and I've been meaning to change these strings. Now, I'm going to do the string change on this next week because this has a very interesting, you know, this Bigsby Bridge. Changing the strings on this and getting the strings in up through there and all that is a real pain. As you can imagine, see where those, those, those are on the underside there, right? And it's kind of hard to get to this, you know, angle, get it up through. And if you knew, need to do a quick string change, man, it's not not fun. So I bought a device. Um, it's, a, it's a mod. You know, this is Mod Squad, right? I bought, a, I bought a little mod that's called some kind of a claw that hooks onto here and lets you basically, uh, you know, run your string uh, through the claw thing. And it makes string changes super, super simple. But for now, back to what we're talking about, what you use the isopropyl alcohol for is cleaning your strings. So I just take a little bit, a little dabble, do you? All right, and now watch how much, here's what it looks like right now. Watch how much gook comes off here. And I know this sounds terrible. I know, I know it does, and I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I think that was from a uh, Cheech and Chong movie. Nice dreams or something like that with Pee Wee Herman. Well, okay, not so dirty after all. So the string's not in that bad of shape. I thought it was going to be. Normally, you would find, uh, you know, because I usually run this other stuff over it. So here's something else you can use. The Dario XLR8. Accelerate. <laughs> String lube and cleaner, right? Focus, 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 focus. You got to put it in the middle of the screen, then it'll focus, right? So this stuff is good, and it's very simple to use. You can have this in your take take your take bag or whatever go bag or whatever. I usually keep an extra one of these springs. That's uh, the spring that goes into your strat, so that the, the handle will kind of like you don't have to go all the way till it uh, tightens, but it compresses against the spring, and then you can set it to wherever you want. Keep one of those in the bottom of this little thing. But this is a very simple, uh, and you can see I haven't used this one because it's brand new. I had it in the studio room here. But this basically already has some, you know, stuff on it. I don't know if you see my fingers a little wet. And what you can do is, you know, after playing a gig or whatever, you can just 
you know, wipe this stuff over the string like that, and it'll usually get off any of the gunk that's there. Yeah, I haven't been playing this one much lately, so that's why there's not so much gunk. Maybe I should get one that has more playing action lately. How about the V? Let's see if the V's got a little more gunk in it. Let me pull it closer. Hope you guys can hear me okay, by the way. Hey, Johnny Bean, what's up, dude? Check it out. So I've been playing this one more, so it's more likely to be a little gunky. So let's let's try that. All right. Let me just wipe it. And you can put this on before you play as well, because what it does is it lubricates, in a sense, you know, the strings a little bit. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to slide and play, right? Um, you know, it's nice to, to it's a cheat thing, if you want to call it that or whatever, but, you know, there's not, not much of any dirt coming off there because I kind of keep my stuff, as you know, I keep my stuff relatively clean because that keeps your strings lasting longer, which is all good. So that's the strings, right? Now there's another, there's another, another way to do it. You know, you do it this way with the alcohol or whatever. There's another way to do it, and that's something that I just recently bought, and I've had them in the past. But these are great to have. So you buy this for five bucks or whatever online, you can get like packages of several of these, you know. And, you know, there's this Dunlop stuff, right? You can buy the string cleaner separately. Okay, string cleaning and conditioning. Focus, but you can get the whole set. So I got a box that has a whole set of these things. All right. And they all are something like you have it for the various things. I'll go over them. But the string one, you know, just pop it open. Now you shake it up, you know, and then it'll start coming out like my finger is wet already, right? So you can just put that on the strings like this. But I prefer to dab it on here. Like that, get this a little bit wet with that stuff, right? And similar to the string stretcher, the stretcher that Johnny knows about, what you do is you slip this, you know, up under there like that, just clamp it down, and you just run this along. And you get all the strings all at once. Isn't that cool? Oops, I, ac I accidentally pushed down a button here. Good job, Les. It's more like. <laughs> so I've got, uh, you know, this string cleaner, and this does them all at once. Really, really cool. You know, just pop this puppy off there. Did I do it? Yeah. How does it pop out? Pop it off. There you go. Just pull it back, and it pops right off, right? So you want to do it in between there or here. But, you know, we got a little, little dirt that time. You guys see that? Yeah. There we go. So, you know. The underside. This gets the underside real good, right? Put it back on there. Do a couple little, couple more runs. Go like that. Doesn't that sound great? I love that sound. That's the clean string sound. Now, you can, of course, loosen your strings so that they're not going to be so tight so you don't worry about popping a string or something, right? But um, that's basically it right there, man. So a little bit of, little bit of dirt. Not too much. And then you can wash this with some, you know, dish soap or mild soap in your kitchen when you're done or whatever. So there you go. So I got that. Now, what else can you use to clean your... So when I bought that, I also bought these. Now, this is getting nerdy. <laughs> this is getting nerd, nerd, nerdizzle, right? But here, too, you got a similar kind of, you know, cleaning thing. So this is great for on your the body of your guitar, getting into little cracks and crevices and stuff, right? It's got this, you know lint free kind of static free thing and you can get into a lot of spots to keep your guitar dust free you want to take all the dust off first you know before you start wiping it down with some kind of cleaner but um you know something like that's good now you might want to like blow it off and get you know any anything that might hurt your guitar surface off the surface first but i took this off the wall and it's in clean condition you know you got like this little tip that you know you can get in, in into these little spots like that too, right? Like here, like there. Look at that. Fits into every little spot, right? Can't miss a spot with this stuff. Everything is covered. Even a thin one. Look at that, how thin that is to get inside of spots, right? 
But what's great is like, let's say, you know, you want your guitar to look all nice and shiny for a video or whatever you're doing. You know, you want to get all that, that grime and stuff around the headstock out of there. You know, just get that in there. Get that in there, right? You can loosen your strings, like I mentioned, as well. You know, get it in there. It's nice to have all these little tools to take all the dust and grime off because what will happen is that that can clog up stuff and, you know, cause things to not function properly. You know, if you're on the road and you're playing a lot of gigs, the cleaner you, you keep your guitar, and you can take like, you know, 30 minutes or 5, 10 minutes to just quickly clean your guitar. The cleaner you keep your guitar, the the less likely it's going to have problems. Johnny Bean knows this because he's done stuff, right? Hey, Hack, what's up, Jennifer? Jennifer? <laughs> Janice Lala. Jennifer Lala. Janice Lala, what's up? BV Ninja, the legend, is in the house. What's up? Rax Effects is here. Is this shopping TV? No, this is how to keep your guitar clean. Ten top tips on how to maintain your guitar. I got a request by someone to do something on how to keep your guitar in, in clean condition. Um, I think he might have mentioned that he might have had a you know a particular kind of finish on his guitar. And we'll get to that. This one's poly, of course, you know, made in Korea. This is uh, one of the electromatic Gretsch guitars. And it's got, uh, you know, the poly finish on it. Most all guitars have the poly finish on it, you know. But some of the vintage stuff, uh, how you want to maintain and clean those is very precarious. And you don't, you know, you want to be careful. So we were just talking about, you know, keeping your strings clean is very important. Um, you know, using stuff like ben, Big Ben's Nut Sauce. This stuff... This stuff comes in handy. It's not necessarily about cleaning, but more about maintaining in that, you know, on these little spots, like on the bridge where the, the string and on the nut where the string goes in. When you're restringing, you can put a little dab of that. Or you can even use a toothpick and put a little dab. Or even use something like a, a, a you know, what do they call this? Q-tip. <laughs> and, you know, dab a little Vaseline in there. A little Vaseline will do you, too. You know, a little dab will do you. <laughs> so... That's that's just the strings and keeping the strings in good condition, nice, you know. Um, some people want to change their strings, you know. But like I mentioned, we have these, you know, we have these three three things that you can use to keep your clean strings clean. Really, four things. Really, five things. Let me get back that. Where's that thing? Where did I put it? Where did I put that string cleaner thingy? You know, that one that was sliding back and forth. I don't know where I put it. There it is. It's black, and it was against the black. So, so I've got these several items here I use to clean the strings, or you can use to clean. You can use the rubbing alcohol with a lint-free rag. You can use, like, Dunlop's 65 string cleaner and conditioner. You can use uh, the Accelerate Deodario string cleaner and lubricant. And you can use that, any of those things, in conjunction with one of these, like, slip it under lock it down it's got a little 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 handle here you can clean your strings with so voila strings are kept clean quick and easy if you're on the road and you need to do a quick cleaning right yeah not on the guitar racks effects no you put a little bit of the rubbing alcohol on the rag and then you can like this let me show you because you were you were late to the party let me show you what i mean just get a little, little dab all right wet wet your oops ah, look what i did you wet your uh you wet your rag a little dab like that right and then you just grab your string and you clean the gook off of it isn't that a wonderful sound it's like uh, violin players tuning up anyway you'll get a little gook off that way if you just use water it won't probably work as well you know or you can not use if you're scared of alcohol <laughs> or you can't you know you don't want to be around it you can use one of these kind of cleaning things. I also have some other ones. Where are they? They're in my gig bags. I usually, when I go, you know, play out, I take uh, the other ones. They're like these bigger ones that have the same kind of material in them. So before we move on to the next stage, i got to have one of these. Yes, if you don't know what these are, get ready. Because every time I bite down on one of these, something happens. <laughs> bourbon gummy bears yes indeed i'm almost out 
They're very tasty. Very, very tasty. So we've done the strings. Let's put away the string stuff. And by the way, these things are made by Music Nomad. Okay. I'm gonna be, there you go, Music Nomad. So you can buy a kit like that, right? And, and then you've got the Dunlop. Let me line up the Dunlop things here. We got the number one, the number two, and the 65, 65, 65. So this is the string cleaner. And I bought this in a box that came with all this. This is where you can clean the surface of your guitar once you've cleaned it. This is the cream of carnauba wax. But there is another product that I heard about. This is fingerboard prep and cleaner. And this is the fingerboard conditioner, right? People use lemon oil. They use other things. The other Music Nomad makes a whole line of them. But there's also this stuff too. Lizard spit, that's right. Well, this is like a polish. Similar to like carnauba wax in a way, but it's different. So it's much more liquid. And I've used that because it's small. I take it with me. So, you know, but Johnny knows, Johnny's still here, that one of the things you might want to have is a neck stand as well when you're working on your guitar. And the one that I was previously using, I really wasn't happy with because it kept, it was kind of a little bit, clumsy a little bit floppy and it's this free one that came with the uh came with my uh hercules stand right but it would like pop out and jiggle around i didn't like it so when i was with johnny bean window shopping for guitars and stuff i bought this music nomad one i don't want to give it away johnny but um is there anything you want to say about that <laughs> Because I think he got one too. Anyway, hopefully tonight there will be a reveal. Yeah. Well, for sure, BB Ninja, you would not advise rubbing alcohol on a guitar. Uh, of course, not on the guitar. It can make the strings squeak when playing. The alcohol can damage plastic and guitar finish. If you get on the fretboard, it will dry it out. Yeah, this is something that, you know, I learned early on. So like I mentioned the the alcohol thing was like something that was the first thing i ever used and ever did cleaning guitars um you're probably better off obviously using one of these you know solutions that are made more specifically protect your your strings and all that and so i don't really use the alcohol anymore just so you know but i was just mentioning early on that i was like one of the first things that i ever used let me go go ahead and turn this back up to me now so you know and Back in the 90s, 80s, and 90s, uh, they didn't have all these products. <laughs> you had to come up with, uh, you use like auto, auto, you know, like body cream of carnival wax and stuff like that on guitar. As far as I know, they didn't have stuff like that back then. Um, a lot of this stuff is more recent, uh, recent decades, right? So next, I guess, where do we go next? So it does also help to have a string, you know, kind of tuner knob turner like this it makes you know tuning your guitar a lot faster um, but you don't have to um, one time I bought one of these too you know and put it on the end of my drill it's the same kind of thing but my drill was a little too fast and too big and clumsy and heavy and and so I got one of these for when they were on sale or something it's made by Ernie Ball right quick quick power peg quickly you know do your strings so um, let me go quick over the neck here then. Let's slide this down. I'm gonna go ahead and slide everything over like that. So you guys see what I do next. All right, so now we got the neck here, right? So I'll go ahead and turn this, this direction to the headstock, right? So we've got I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna loosen the strings. I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna go ahead and change these strings. So I'm not gonna change them today all the way unless Johnny wants me to come on his show tonight. I'm not gonna entirely change them today. I was thinking about changing them 
next week uh, on Mod Squad because uh, I have a, a really cool. Oh, see, this is another reason why it's good to have something like this. I could stick this under the body section here, where the string's pulling through, so I don't, I don't create uh, a scratch on the body right there. That came in handy. I should show you guys what I just did. So see right there where I have uh, this like little cleaner device. I just slip it under here like that, under where the the, the bridge is and where the strings are. And um, let me show you why. So sometimes you discover things like this as you go, right? So I'm going to go ahead and release this next one. Now, another thing I noticed, and this is something you'll discover as you're going along working on your guitar, you'll notice stuff. Like, I just noticed this nut. Wonder if we can focus on that nut. Focus. Look how chewed up that is where those two strings just came out. There you go. That looks terrible, right? Plastic nut. So you know what? Before I put the strings back on this thing, I might I might go buy a bone nut, or I'll you know see if I have a bone nut that I can put in here, because that plastic nut's crappy. <laughs> so what I did was uh, just so you see what I did here again. This I stuck this under here because the way that the string is popping through, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cause a it's gonna cause a scratch on the body surface here if I'm not careful, right? But having this under it here, and I'm pulling this through, I'm pulling it through over this little pad. You can use a cloth too, you know, but that worked great. So, yeah, these strings are just old and kind of lifeless probably by now. And uh, it's been a while since I changed these strings. Now, I'll usually save these because sometimes, believe it or not, you know, there's the other technique of boiling strings, you know. I don't know how how that affects the string and its quality and its sound and tone and all that stuff. But, um, you know, if you don't have money, you can, you know, you can pull your strings off and boil them in hot water. Maybe even with a little bit of soap, I think, might even not be a bad thing. Definitely... Don't use alcohol. <laughs> anyway, so now what? So I'm just going to take some of those off. Um, well, should I take them all off? I'll take them all off. I've got to do it quick, though. So I don't got a lot of time. i got to be off by 1030, right? Oops. Let me turn this back here. Back to there. Pull that off. This is protecting nicely here. Real quick and easy. I'm just going to set them aside and not wrap them up now. Cause... I'm going to do them all real quick. I know this is a lot of fun listening to this noise. Some of you guys are in the way. There we go. Got all those out. Now, when there's no tension, of course, this thing's popping, popping out of place. When there's no tension, of course, this thing's popping out of place. So keep in mind if you're using a Bigsby. You don't want to lose this. You don't want it to fall on the body or something like that, right? There we go. Those are done. Set those aside. So you know the fretboard. I can see a little bit of little bit of grunge. Not a lot. I don't think you're gonna really see it in this light. Oops. Should I get a flashlight? Hold on. So. 
you can see that there's a little bit of there's a little bit of grunge around the uh, frets there, right? Frets are clearly not shiny and bright like you'd want them. So what do you do next? Well, obviously, if you want to polish the the surface of these, then you're going to want to use some kind of a polishing kind of tool, right? Polishing tools or whatever. And uh, first step you're going to want to take is get some of this painter's tape, this blue tape. You want to use painter's tape because you don't want to damage the surface of your, your guitar, right? And what you're using this for is to cover the magnets on your pickups because you don't want the magnets to pick up any, any of that like filings or whatever you might want to call it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go right up against it like that. Just cover all this liberally. Right. Now you can just cover this with a cloth or something, but it's likely when you lift it up, some of those little filings or whatever are going to fall down onto your guitar. There's different ways you can do this, uh, you know, but it's good to have this handy, you know, some blue tape. Now, of course, you can go ultra super, super psycho and cover your, uh, you know, your fretboard like that. Now, um, in this case, because this is a rosewood fretboard and not a maple one, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use these uh, special tools that are in my, my basket of uh, goodies here somewhere. Oh, yeah, they're here. So I've got my little micro mesh system for the fret, you know, the frets uh, to polish them. It's basically a 12, I think 12 or 10 uh, step process of just, you know, polishing down the frets real quick. Um, you can also get, you know, one of these kind of cuticle files to do that as well. Um, I also have this fret end dressing tool to take down the, you know, round the corners of these around the edges of the frets. I don't have any frets or any issues there, so I'm not going to need to do that today. So, you know, I have these all in their various colors. I just usually line them up here in order and just work my way down, right? I start with the, uh, the purple one. Where is that? Like that. And what do we got? We got the green. And you can kind of tell by looking at them. And we got that darker blue. The pink is one of the last ones. Oh, this gray. This one is near the end too. I can tell by feeling it. Yeah, this one's like there. Yeah. Like that, right? So I just line them up in a row here like this, according to this, you know, chart. And then I use these tools. You get a you get a set of these, I think, with the if you don't, I, I probably bought them separately, but basically they're just fret these things, right? They cover they cover the uh, fretboard, they protect your fretboard. So when you're doing the ones on the very end here, they're gonna be thinner. So you use one of the thinner ones and you just do this. I'm gonna do this quicker than I did ever before. Just go over it with this until you don't see any of those little divots. And this is just polishing, you guys. It's not uh, crowning and fraying and all that stuff. So I'm just going down the line real quick, right? Down the line real quick. And what you're doing is you're just taking any of that stuff down. You know, you're taking it off. You're taking it down. It's already getting better. I can feel it. And you'll see, you know, this is, can be done quickly. You don't have to spend forever on it like I did on that last live video. <laughs> kind of overdid it <laughs> that time. Like this real quick. Oh, are we already over? Wow, we're already over 1039. Holy crap. I didn't realize we we're running late. So I'm going to do this quick. So, yeah. I'll be ready in a little bit, hon. So, uh, you know, you can see the difference between this fret now. The one on the end, see how it's shining? Look at how it's like a piece of glass, like a mirror, right? This one, not so much <laughs> because it's not as glassy, right? So then what I would then next do, I'm going to try to wrap this up in five minutes, you guys. Next thing I would do is clean the uh, fretboard, right? So then you're going to use your fretboard polishing and cleaning prep, right? Clean and deep cleaning. Now, I've already done this before, so I don't know if I have to go through 
this whole thing again with you guys. But, you know, you want to shake this stuff up. Get another, you know, another one of these. Where's a dirtier one? I'm going to get a dirtier one. Yeah. You get one of these, you know. And you spray a little on here. You don't spray it on your guitar. And then you just clean any of the gunk out of there. Now I put some tape on this one. I'm going to pull that off so I can clean this. All right. And you just try to get any gunk that might be out of there. And there is gunk coming out. There is some stuff coming out. See that? Yeah. So definitely yucky. So once you've done all that, all right, I'm going to try to keep an eye on the chat at the same time. Someone's going to go do some troubleshooting. Hack is going to troubleshoot his amp today. So, you know, you clean the gunk out until you don't see it. And you can get your nail in there a little bit like that, you know. And uh, you can wear gloves if you don't want to get your hands dirty. But there's a big difference between these uh, frets, the fretboard here now, than these ones here. I see this buildup of gunk on these ones. I don't see that buildup of gunk over here anymore. Notice the difference. I don't know if you can see the difference. Right? And then you'll use your next stage. The, ooh, where did I put it? This one. Set it aside. Oh, here you go. Then use your fretboard conditioning. You know, if you use lemon oil or whatever kind of stuff you, you know, there's different people have different attitudes. You always shake this stuff up, though. Always shake it up good. Now, this one, because it has a special applicator tip, you can, you know, apply right on there, right? And you can get quite a bit. Now, you know, lemon oil might go quicker than this, this applicator tip thing, but you just want to get it right on there, right? And and sometimes you can, you know, get do the whole fretboard and let it soak in a little bit, you know, give it a couple minutes to kind of get in there, right? And, and then just wipe off the access, right? Put these away. We're going to move on to the next step. Okay. We're going to move on to the next step. All right. So that is that. So now you can use a cleaner cloth like this one, now that you know it's clean, and just kind of buff it off. And look at the difference, man. Look at the difference between... The previous fretboard, you know, look at that. The, the the bottom two ones here. Look how nice they look. All right? Now, the other ones are okay, but look at the difference between the fret, too. That fret's nice and shiny. So now the next step, okay? Next step, of course, is the body. And, of course, the, the neck. Um, what I mean by neck is the back of the neck. Some people like to put different things on there. Some people will even remove, uh, you know, sand off or use steel wool or something to take the uh, gloss off the back of the neck to make it a little more slidey slidey, right? I don't, I don't do that on these. I leave them stock, you know, so it's shiny. And, and sometimes that Cornuba wax, oops, I knew that was going to fall off, you see? I already did what I, I was warning you guys about. The spring popped off <laughs> in the handle. <laughs> Not a big deal. You know, nothing bad's going to happen. It, luckily, it didn't hit the body. Otherwise, would have heard that clink, clink, clunk. So, um, you know, to clean the body, I would recommend using some kind of a cleaner, right? And Dunlop does make this guitar body polish and cleaner. Now, you might want to look at the special directions when it comes to whether you should use this on, you know, a uh, uh, lacquered guitar or not. But, you know, always take a nice clean, you know, you can get these at the dollar store, just like I got these uh, bath mats at the dollar store to use as the surface to, you know, clean the guitar, set the guitar on. But I'll spray a little on the cloth, right? And I'll just get it in there. And then this is where you can also use your, your Music Nomad special cleaning tools get into certain spots that you can't get into like say up in here right now I don't know if you can see the surface of my guitar but there are 
areas with smudges. See the smudges? Smudges and stuff, right? See that center area between the picks where I, I cleaned it? Nice and glassy. Now, you can just use that stuff alone. You could just use just this stuff alone. All right? Again, you know, apply a little onto the rag, clean rag. You can use one of these lint, lintless ones too. And in a, you know, swirling round and round motion usually. Always inspecting to make sure there's nothing on the surface of the guitar, like a burr or a piece of metal or something from when you were doing your fret work. Definitely after you're done with all the fret work, you can even use a vacuum cleaner and suck up any of the dust off there. That's a really good idea. You know, I only did this one here and I wasn't too concerned that there's a lot of stuff coming off there, right? So here you go. Now I'm not gonna deal with like swirl removing or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, that's, you know, another level. But um, this doesn't have any, it has some waxes in it, you know, but it smells like some kind of a cleaning solution, right? Um, so that stuff, there you go. Now, next level, if you really want to shine her up, you get another, like I have this little piece of cloth here that I use just for another one of these uh, lint-free kind of things. And this is the Carnuba wax, right? Cream of Carnuba wax. So you can, people use mothers and other car, you know, types of Carnuba wax finish uh, polishes and whatnot. You want to give it a good shaky, shaky, shaky. And just a little dab will do you. You know, I put a little bit too much the splooge. <laughs> but you know, you don't might maybe not want to use that much. But you know, just work it around. Now, same thing goes with all your electronic parts here. You want to make sure everything's tight. You know, check that everything is operating tightly. You can use deoxit cleaner if you have some pots that are feeling funny or that are crackling. Before you do any of this, and when you use the deoxid, you know, put some of these rags or something around. Don't use paper towels or anything that might be abrasive. You know, use these kinds of rags around it. So when you're spraying that kind of stuff, you know, into your pots and whatnot, normally you would do that, you know, on the inside of the pot anyway, not, you know, on the top where the body's at. Um, it's kind of tricky to do that kind of stuff with a guitar that has the uh, electronics inside where there's no cavity from the back that you can access them from right so you get this little cornuba wax on there and you can let it you know like you do when you polish a car if you've ever done this with a car you let it you let it oops should just drop that out of there before yeah um you let it let it sit am i doing the right side now here you know i'm gonna do this side here because you can't see that side get a little bit more Just get a little bit of that carnauba wax. Put a little bit more. Just a little bit. There we go. Just a little bit. And of course, you can do the whole body. You know, once you clean it, you want to use that cleaner first, right? And you just get it everywhere. Get a little bit everywhere, and let it kind of settle in and dry. It doesn't hurt to have this on the metal parts. It'll protect the. Uh, Chrome parts, you can put it on your edges of your pickups and stuff. It's it's not going to, you don't want to cake it on. So, you know, <laughs> don't go after me about, you know, oh, you're going to cake up your thing with carnival wax. You know, you you are probably going to have more problems with dirt and grime than you're going to have with the carnival wax or whatever. But, oops. But, yeah, I should probably take this off but before it falls like the other thing. Anyway, so we're going to, you know, we're going to go over this guitar. And do everything right to it. But right now, you got the carnauba wax here kind of drying a little bit. It gets all hazy-like, right? That's what you want. And then you take another one of these, very clean, right? And just polish. You just kind of wipe it round and round. And all you're really doing here is just, you know, keeping the surface protected with cleaning products and polishes that'll keep your sweat and grimy you know if you're more acidic i don't tend to have too much acidity in my sweat i don't sweat a lot when i play so my hands don't get too sweaty some people have much more acidic um you know fluids in their body <laughs> that they expel 
And um, obviously, you know, some people have a lot more things to have to deal with, a lot more. It's probably more important if you have, if you know you have more acidic sweat and stuff to clean more often and more regularly and definitely using these kinds of products that shine things up and clean them up. So let me show you guys the uh, Finito Producto. So look at that. Now look, compared to the rest of the body, it's shiny too, but it's got smudges. You know, like I said, I keep my stuff clean. But man, that's that's super shiny, glossy, and nicely protected. And you put a little on the back of the guitar too, you know, on the neck. Well, you can put it on the back of the guitar too. But you put a little of the carnauba wax on here too, you know. And obviously, you're not going to have a neck that's going to be as sticky when you're playing it right now it's sliding a lot easier it's not as sticky there are other products that people sell that make it you know even more slippery right but that's basically it you guys uh that's what i use you know like i mentioned the big ben's nut sauce you could put in the nut slots and on the uh, bridge tail piece you know when you put your uh oops, the other way you know, but um, this is what I use, and if you want to dress the fret ends, you know, you can dress the fret ends with a fret end dressing tool like this. On a guitar like this, because it has the binding, I would definitely put, you know, the, uh, the blue tape onto the frets when I use this, you know. Um, and I guess finally, finally, what would be the final, final step in the process? Um, if you want to, you know, you have your other tools to set, you know, the heights of your pickups, your strings. You know, this this tool right here helps you with string height settings and pickup height settings and stuff. You can get one of these micrometers to check, you know, your your width of your neck. You can do this to check a variety of stuff like I did the other day. Um, you can have your radius gauges to make sure your radius is correct on your bridge um you can have like a little set of snippers like this i have this little tool set that has all kinds of stuff you know and then i keep uh, a set of allen keys and all kinds of other things in this toolbox that i call my guitar maintenance kit i keep all this stuff in here and i have an extra box for the bigger things like you know this meter i don't need so I can take that with me when I go do a gig, and it makes it easy to have stuff that I need on hand. Um, but yeah, you know, keep these things organized. It'll go a long way. And then another thing, too, is if you are going to need to pull knobs off or something like that, you can get a, a tool like this knob puller that I got from Stu Mac. You know, basically, it, it you know, once you release, you know, you, you, you can then pull it off like that. Um, it's a lot safer than trying to do it otherwise like prying or something i've seen some people try to pry them up with these tools these are great tools for tightening certain things like let's say you need to tighten this a little bit um you need to tighten your that's another thing you should do oops you know this one doesn't have it but uh there are some that have you know the nut on the top obviously you know you can you can tighten your if you have that kind of tuner where you have a nut up here you can use this kind of tool to tighten your nuts make sure all your 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 nuts your tuner pegs are tight so yeah these are all the tools that i use um i learned a lot of this from watching people like phil mcknight now if you want to get really nerd nerdizzle you can get one of these and why i have this is let me make sure those are tight without strings on it I can check the weight of my guitar. Let's see how much it weighs. Okay, let's let's redo that. Pounds and ounces, of course. Now this is width. It's at zero now. So this is this is a luggage a luggage. Thingy. So you just hang it. I have this includes the the strap, and we've got a weight of eight point eight point oh nine. No, eight point ten. Eight point one. Eight point one pounds. So that's the weight of this hollow hollow body, semi hollow body guitar. So 
that's basically it, you guys. I'm sorry I went long. <laughs> I don't know who's still here. Yeah, I went a half an hour long. Dang it. Hey Preston, hey Kurt Fifty One. Remember if it's a main if it's it's a matte finish guitar, you rub lightly, no buffing or pressing hard. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I have my matte uh, finished blue the Angelico right here. And I have another matte finished guitar, this seven string right here from Court. Yeah, you don't want to use the Carnuba wax necessarily on that, I don't think, but you can use like the cleaner. So you can use the uh the cleaner like that one or maybe even the uh where's that lizard spit stuff right so um you know the point is to keep dirt and grime off of it right and how to maintain it so it doesn't go bad so i'm gonna ditch now because we're running way over i'm uh supposed to go take my sweetie out somewhere i had a fun day yesterday uh you know white water river rafting it was a blast i highly recommend it if you guys ever get a chance to do that before you get too old because I can feel my body <laughs> all, all day on the river. You know, it was a, it was a pretty, uh, it wasn't strenuous, but definitely it was a bit of a workout. So it was a lot of fun. So that's what I've got for you guys today. If there's any ideas, thoughts, recommendations, suggestions, um, leave them in the comments. And like I always say at the end of these, the secret to tone is in your mind. The feel comes from your heart. Put them together, make some music, and rock on. Have a good one, you guys. If I could find my mouse, I don't know where I put it. <laughs> Have a good one, everybody. Take care.